Hey, what's up guys? So I've gotten a, a lot of submissions on things that you guys want videos made of uh, pertaining to FTC operations and gun line operations. Um, so I promise that I will dive into those things. Um, but I think I wouldn't do this page any justice if I skipped over the basics of the M16 plotting board, right? So if you're a Marine attending advanced mortarman's course or a a soldier who's out there getting ready to attend infantry mortar leaders course. Um, if you don't show up to these courses with already an understanding of this right here, all right, your time there is going to be a lot, a lot harder. All right, am I saying you can't pass these courses going into there blind on the M16 plotting board? Absolutely not. All right, um, but it will make your life 100% easier if you already show up there already knowing this information and then for all of you that are already you know in the army you have your your bravo one identifier or you're already amc complete in the marine corps um, i want this page to be somewhere that you can just come back to as a refresher all right so not necessarily having to flip back into the TCs yourself and be like, okay, how do I conduct this mission? You can just roll up to this page, find the video that I've created, and then just use that as a refresher. All right, so without further ado, I'm going to dive into the M16 plotting board orientation. All right, so you see this highlighted yellow portion. All right, so that's your M16 plotting board base. On this plotting board base, to the far right hand side, you have your range scale. All right, so it's composed of two separate range scales. You have your one in 50 thousandths range scale and your one in 25 thousandths range scale. To the center of your base, you have what we call our pivot point. All right, so this is the point that connects your base to your azimuth disc. It's just a magnet. Off of that pivot point, you have your vertical center line with your range scale. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So starting from your pivot point, if you're following that north arrow, you're going to see a total range of 3,000 meters. All right, so starting at zero all the way to 3,000 meters. Now, same thing if you follow that arrow to the south. All right, so zero to 3,000 meters. Remember that when we get into the pivot point method. All right, so like I was saying earlier, um, your azimuth disc, that yellow circle here, that is the other magnet part that connects to your plotting board base. All right, and that spins freely and it covers the entirety of your mills here ranging from zero to 6,400. All right, up top of our potting board base, you'll see you have deflection, and then 10, five, zero, five, 10, and azimuth, all right, that is your veneer scale. Before we dive into your veneer scale, I want everyone to get a, a solid understanding of how to read these plotting board base grid lines. All right, so, if you look, you'll see you have these bigger black boxes and then inside of those you have smaller green boxes. Those smaller green boxes are 50 meters, right? So one green box is 50 meters. If you continue counting those, you get two green boxes, it's a total of 100 meters. All right, I continue through this process all the way till I reach that big black box, I'm gonna have a total distance of 500 meters. All right, so there's 10 green boxes in one black box. All right, so you'll have a total distance of one black box of 500 meters. Now, if we double that to get two black squares, then that's gonna be a total distance of one click or a thousand meters. Okay, diving into the veneer scale. This is everyone's favorite um, on the M16 plotting board. It's probably the biggest friction point um, pertaining to basic 
FTC missions. All right, starting off here. If I'm going to read an azimuth on my plotting board, I'm going to use the hard numbers that's already on my azimuth disk. All right, so 6200630000100200200. That's what I'm referring to when I say hard numbers, all right? So when you pick up your plotting board, those are the numbers that you should already see. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to start at the zero of my veneer scale, and I'm going to read towards my letters to the right. All right, so azimuth is to the right. I'm going to read my numbers to the right. Now for deflection, I'm going to read towards the left. So I'll dive into how to superimpose your deflection scale on here, but just know if I'm reading my deflection, I wanna to read towards my letters to the left. And that's all I'm saying for your azimuth and then for your deflection, all right? So if I say, hey, I want you to index an azimuth of 2200. All right, all index means is you're going to take your index mark, which is that black arrow on your potting board base, and you're going to spin your azimuth disc until the hard numbers on your azimuth disc line up with that index mark, that black arrow, and the zero on your veneer scale. All right, so in this case, you're going to rotate your azimuth disc until 2200 falls exactly lined up with your index mark and the zero on your veneer scale, just like so, all right? Now, on the screen, you see an indexed azimuth of 3400. All right, so I would have just continued spinning my board for my azimuth disc until I get 3400 on my azimuth disc lined up exactly with the index mark and the zero of my veneer scale. So I have an indexed azimuth of 3400 in this scenario, just like so. All right, on the screen here, you see an index azimuth of 6,300. Now, what do we do if those, those numbers don't line up perfectly with my index mark and my zero to my veneer scale? All right, so like I was saying earlier, for azimuths, you're reading to the right. So first thing you need to do is find your hard number on the azimuth disc that falls just to the left of the zero. All right, what I mean by that is you'll see your zero in the center here. To the right, you have 3,200. And just to the left, you have 3,100. All right, so in order to obtain my azimuth, in this case, I'm going to take those first two digits of the 3,100 and that's going to be my first two digits of my azimuth. All right, now from here, all I'm going to do is count the ticks on my azimuth disc, those black marks, until I reach zero, all right? So in this case, I started at 3100. I obtained my first two digits of 31. Now, in order to obtain my third digit, I'm just going to count over in this case was six ticks to get me my last digits of six zero. All right, if it falls directly on one of those ticks, that's 60 mils, so my last two digits will be 60, all right? All right, same thing for here. All right, I don't fall directly on a number, so all I'm going to do is look to the left of my zero or my index mark obtain my first two digits, so three, eight. And then once I have those, I can go ahead and start counting to the right. Remember, azimuths to the right until I reach zero. <clears throat> so in this case, directly on that, that five zero mark. So I have an index azimuth of three, eight, five, zero. All right, so what do we do if we obtain our first two digits and then we start counting to the right and 
it does not fall perfectly on our tick mark. All right, so all we're going to do, just like before, go ahead and automatically obtain our first two digits of our azimuth. So in this case, we have five zero, and we notice that our one is just beyond our zero. All right, so for this case, our third digit would be a zero. All right, so it's not on the one, it's just before. Therefore, my, la my third digit will be a zero. All right, how we obtain our fourth and final digit is going up on our veneer scale, starting at zero, and we're going to count to the right. All right, so you see up there we have five and 10. All right, that is a total of 10 mils to our right. So we're just going to count those mils until one of those lines on our veneer scale line up perfectly with the lines on our azimuth disc. Keep counting over until I find one that lines up perfectly. In this case would be the ninth mil or the ninth tick on my veneer scale. Therefore, my fourth and final digit of this azimuth would be a nine. So I have an indexed azimuth of 5009. All right, same thing here. I'm gonna obtain my first two digits of six one, counting over. Okay, I realize that the zero on my veneer scale is just be between my four and my five on my azimuth disc. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that lesser number of four. Now continuing to the right, I need to go ahead and make my way up on to my mills on the veneer scale and start counting to obtain my fourth and final digit. All right, so in this case, was it two? Let's have an index azimuth of 6142. All right, so what you see up here is an index azimuth of zero nine, two, five. All right, zero nine, two, five. Now feel free if you have a plotting board in front of you just to follow along with what I have up on the screen. All right, so go ahead and index an azimuth of 3160. Now if you're doing this, you're spinning your plotting board, your azimuth disc up until your 3100 is just to the left of the zero in the index mark. And then you're going to count six ticks over on your plotting board or on your azimuth disc until that six tick, tick lines up perfectly with the index mark and your zero on your veneer scale. All right. Now, we just covered how to read your azimuth on the veneer scale. What we're going to do is superimpose a deflection scale or a fur deflection onto our plotting board. All right, so say I have a, a mounting azimuth or an azimuth of 3150. All I'm going to do is take my refer deflection, in this case of 2800, and I'm going to superimpose that onto my plotting board. I'm going to put those numbers on my plotting board. So I index my mounting azimuth of 3150. And then all I'm going to do is fill in 28 starting at 3150. Now for dealing with deflections, we're gonna utilize our acronym LARS, right? So left, add, right, subtract. So going to the right, 100 mils, I'm going to put a 29. And I'm going to do this until I've obtained 400 mils to the left and 400 mils to the right. So I'm still going to the left, I'm still adding 100 mils, so 30, 31, and 32. All right, so how I did this, I started at 3150. I dropped just below that, that five tick mark, and I wrote in 
with a mechanical pencil, 2800. All right, so 28. Remember, if you're working with the plotting board, you want to use mechanical pencils. All right, um, if I post any videos utilizing map markers, map pens on the plotting board, it's just so you can physically see it through the video. All right, but you want to use only mechanical pencils when you're writing on your plotting board. All right, so I did 400 mils to the left. Now I'm just going to do the same thing to the right. But remember, Lars, I'm going to the right. I need to subtract in mils. So 100 mils less than 28 is 27, 26, 25, 24. All right, all the way to 400 mils. All right, once I have my refer deflection superimposed, I'm going to read off my deflections. So what you see on the screen I'm reading deflections now, so I'm starting to the left. So I'm going to do the opposite of what I just did for my azimuths. All right, so I'm going to take the numbers that I just wrote on my plotting board, and I'm going to find which one falls to the right of my index mark and my zero. In this case, it would be a 27. So I'm going to pull that 27, that's gonna become my first two digits of my deflection. And then just like you did with your azimuths, just this, excuse me, this time we're reading to the left. You're just counting the number of ticks until you reach your index mark and your zero on your veneer scale. So in this case, I have my ninth tick to the left lined up perfectly. That's 90 mils. Therefore, my deflection would be 2790. All right, for this case, just like your azimuths, okay, the numbers don't line up perfectly. That's fine. All you're going to do is go just to the right, pull those first two digits of your deflection, and then count to the left for your deflections until you reach your zero or just before. All right, so in this case, it doesn't fall exactly on our line. So you're gonna take that lesser number, that's gonna become your third digit. Now, just like you did before, in order to obtain our fourth and final digit of our deflection, you're going to make your way up to your veneer scale. So you're just going to count the mills on your veneer scale until you find one that lines up perfectly with the line on your azimuth disc. So in this case was our fourth tick or fourth mill, therefore, we get a fourth and final number of four for our deflection of 2894. So right now I have 2894 indexed on my plotting board. All right, same thing here. So remember, I have to obtain my first two digits. So I'm going to take the number just to the right that I wrote in of 26 count to the left towards deflection on my veneer scale until I find one that lines up perfectly. In this case, it would be the four. So I have a index deflection of 2640. All right, so on the screen, we have an index azimuth of 28, one, six. All right, so the zero fell in between our one and our two. So we took the lesser number of one, that became our third digit, moved up to the veneer scale, and we just counted the mills or the ticks on our veneer scale until we figured out which one lined up perfectly with our azimuth disc to obtain our fourth and final digit. All right, so in this first video, I just talked um, very basic plotting board orientation, just to get you guys familiar um, with the key components that you see on a M16 plotting board. All right, we talked about how to read azimuths 
and we talked about how to superimpose a refer deflection scale onto your plotting board, right? If you have any questions over this video, please either comment on the video or shoot me a DM and I will try to explain more in depth on just basic board setup pertaining to the M16 plotting board.